Hey Climbers, Brent here, and before we get into the show, I want to let you know about a killer event that's coming up. It's the Martha's Vineyard Songwriting Festival, and it's coming up September 12th through the 16th in beautiful Martha's Vineyard. We're going to have a great weekend of music, workshops, and networking. I'm co-headlining the weekend workshops with my pal, Jimmy Yeary. Jimmy wrote, I drive your truck for Lee Bryce. Everything's going to be all right for David Lee Murphy and Kenny Chesney and a bunch of other stuff. Joining us will be hit songwriters Byron Hill, who's written hits for George Strait and a bunch of others, and Jesse Lee, whose hits include Peter Pan for Kelsey Ballerini. We'd love to have you join us in the vineyard. You can get all the details and reserve your spot today at Martha's Vineyard Songwriting Fest. Dot com. That's Martha's Vineyard Songwriting Fest. Dot com. All right, Johnny, do your thing. Welcome to the club. This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. What is leverage, you ask? What is leverage? Leverage is a strategic advantage. Leverage is the power to act effectively because you're bringing something to the table more than a possibility, more than potential, more than just your talent. It is proof a reputation that you've already done it you've already created an audience and people are responding to your songs people are responding to you as an artist they're they're you're you're getting attention that's what they want to see that's what they want to bank on and that's what you're going to need to to take the next step up as a songwriter and indie artist in this business and that's why we called it the climb c l i m b creating leverage in the music business brilliant <laughs> and my genius co-host and good friend mr brent baxter is the one that came up with that Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And Brent also helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and on a regular basis, he's connecting you with the pros and giving you some at-bats. You can reach Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. They help you find your sound, and they help you grow your audience so you can become the artist that everybody loves and so you can get paid. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production, singular, no S, and there is no S because there is no other... Johnny D. Yes. What's going on, brother? Man, I'm just I'm just happy to have someone to talk to. We are. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You got a house full of people to talk to. I know. They In different to languages, me. even. They like. talk to me. <laughs> you know, Quill completely lost his Mandarin. He's a completely lost it. We're. You I know. I had. It's been just a little over a year. Ren, the older one, he still has it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But so uh, he's just Quill, Quill, just English. Just Quill, just completely. We thought he. They were still talking to each other. Some in Mandarin. And these are my two, two of my, uh, my two adopted kids out of my four, and so we thought they still understood it. And like at night, we do Bible study, and and we have a English uh, Chinese Bible. So I'd read a little section. I'd have Ren read a little bit because he's literally Quill never learned how to read Chinese. He's too young, right. whatever. Um, and I'd have him read like what as I Chinese. Just read. God bless him. That's yeah. Four thousand characters, Good like grief. <laughs> and. Um, Anyway, so I'd read a little, I'd read a verse, whatever in English. Then I'd have him read it in in Mandarin, which I thought would be cool for him and Quill getting their native tongue, and also just cool reading the Bible in different languages. Yeah. And so we've been doing that a little bit, and Quill would smile and go, "I like that, I like that." I'm like, "Cool," you know, because I'm thinking he understands it. All right. He had no clue. So like a week, you know, a little while later, Emily's having, you know, she's talking to Quill about something, and he's like, "I don't know," and she's like, "Ren, tell him." You know, in Chinese, whatever. And he says it, and Quill just stared at the blankest look you've ever seen. He's like. You don't know what he's saying, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that all the time, like, he's reading out of the Bible in Chinese, you, like, you, you like, I like that. Like, you just like the sound of it. You have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it snuck out the back door. That's so funny, we, dude. We hate it. Yeah, but we're sad, though. We wanted them to keep their language, you know, because it's like a superpower. It's like, you talk to each other in code. Mommy and Daddy don't know what you're saying. Yeah, you right. Know? And, and just... Anyway, so since you mentioned that, now we just have one that speaks, you know, Mandarin. But that makes me a little sad. No. That cool well, maybe you can teach some like of it to the, to the younger one. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but you don't know we're still focused on English. Stuff. We're still trying to get the English, but <laughs> now we're like, don't let Ren lose it. <laughs> right. You can always get a job if you can talk Chinese. You know, like some, that's a skill set. Right. Well, so what are we gonna learn about today? You're driving. 
I'm driving. All right. Well, let's say you've leveraged leveraged your networking because we are into leverage here. Mm-hmm. You've leveraged your networking and your songwriting skills to finally land a meeting with a music publisher. Congratulations. Now, don't screw it up. Right. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how you can screw up a publisher meeting and hopefully how not to. All right. Well, before we get to that, let's take care of a little business here. If you haven't joined the Climb community yet, please do so. Search for it on Facebook. Ask to be let in. We will let everybody in as long as you have a picture. Like mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a good picture, but yeah. it can't be the silhouette thing because you look like a bot. Just exactly. letting you know. So we know you're not a bot. Be you don't self-aware. have to be a babe. Yeah. You don't have to be hot. Yep. Just be real. Don't be a bot. Boom. Oh, oh, what's happened? There we go. I'm more <laughs> and, <mad>. uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we let you in. There's a lot of great stuff going on in the client community, mm-hmm. man. Like, every time I go to post something, we have another 10 or 20 people to let in, and, and uh, everybody's asking questions and, and mm-hmm. getting in there. And, and you can get connected with co-writers in there. You can yeah. post some of your songs in there and get some feedback on it. Uh, you know, we do, uh, we're posting regular sort of articles and marketing. And it's just a great resource, I yeah. think, if that's what you're trying to do. So uh, make sure you're not a spammy terrorist or you will be roadhoused, mm-hmm. right? Uh, secondly, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that every time that we send out a new episode, a full episode on Tuesday, along with a mini-sode on Friday, that it goes automatically into your phone and you can get to it whenever you want to but you don't got to go looking for it it's all there it's organized and ready to rock whenever you are it keeps track of where you've been where you started where you stopped it's mm-hmm. all good uh thirdly is share it yeah and if you like it if you subscribe to it even if you're not subscribed to it tell somebody about it maybe that's they'll subscribe right. to it if it's working for you it'll work for them makes you look cool and that's the best compliment you could give us and lastly take 30 seconds leave a five star rating and a review that uh, helps people who are thinking about maybe giving us a shot know that we're legit and that's that's mm-hmm. not uh, it's you know there's some there's some other quality to it just be honest tell people what you think right yeah we appreciate that all right, so uh, how are we going to not screw this up? This publisher meeting, we got, like, I don't want to blow it. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, because it's not easy to get a publisher meeting. Yeah. Especially if you're out of town or whatever, you're just starting off your career. And, and so you work so hard, you finally get somebody to say, oh, all right, fine. Yeah, come on by, 15 minutes. So let's let's go ahead and dive into that. Ways to, uh, ways to run it. Number one, do not be an ask hole. I said <laughs> ask, A S. K. Don't be an ask hole. So don't focus on your needs and what the publisher can do for you. It's okay to share your goals with the publisher. With that, you know, that clarity w- will help with the meeting. Like, oh, here are my goals for my writing, right? That's cool. But you don't want to beat them over the head by asking for co-writes with their writers, hookups with a producer or artist, hookups with a PRO, helping you land around at the Bluebird for more of their time than you originally agreed to. Like you said, hey, can I have 15 minutes? And now it's 30 minutes in and they're looking at their watch and their their coffee's done and you're still going, right? Right. This is not about you. You are there. Publishers are looking for songwriters who solve the publisher's problems. Publishers are not in the business of solving problems for you. Right. Right? That's not why they exist. That's not why they're doing the mean. They may be doing out of the goodness of their heart to give back, to give young writers a chance, but ultimately... They got their own bills to pay. They have their own cuts to get, right? And their own problems with their job. If you want them to help you, help them. That's what you want to do. You want to you want to be focused on how can I how can I help you? Yeah, here are my goals. That's great. Be upfront about that. But then also it comes down to yeah, if you want to bring songs that help them. It's not all about gimme 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 gimme. Right. Hopefully, a publisher's gonna love you if you present songs and skills and a personality. That's going to help them accomplish their goals. They're going to like you more. Yeah. Right? So first way to run a meeting is just be an asshole. Just you start immediately focus on what you can get from that publisher. And just think about that in terms of like your gig. Whatever day job you have right now, however you're paying the bills, right? Mm-hmm. Like it comes with its own side of challenges every single day. Like you, oh, yeah. nobody ever just has 365 days of rolling into work with no speed bumps, no, no unbroken boulevard of green lights. And right, there's not yeah. some outside thing that comes in and screws something up, some fire you got to put out, some mm-hmm. this and that. That happens with them too. Just be aware oh, of that. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. and, and try to and just to, to try to recognize that and think about how annoyed you get when you're trying to put out a fire and somebody's like, "Hey, hey, hey! Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help yeah. me? What can you do for me? Hey, blah, blah, blah. and you're like, "Man, I got my own stuff. Yeah, I got this going on over here. Yeah. So I just, yeah, we're trying to get on the record here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So am I. Yeah. Well, bring me something that can help me, and we'll both win. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, yeah, that's the first thing, being an ask hole. So, number two, don't talk bad about other songs or songwriters. All right, so Nashville is a small town, and there's a decent chance that the publisher knows someone involved with that song or that artist. 
Heck, the publisher may even publish that song or songwriter, okay? Same goes for any major music center, New York, LA, Toronto, wherever. These are small industries. And so it's okay to state that certain things aren't your cup of tea. That's cool. Again, with kind of the clarity helps the publisher understand your artistic voice, what, mm-hmm. you know, where you're coming from, what you like to do, what you don't like to do, because they might be thinking about co-writes that work well for you, that kind of stuff. So it helps to know kind of what lane you like to occupy. But dragging a song, a songwriter or an artist through the mud is not going to be helpful. It doesn't make you look good. It does not make you look good. The, the point is how you get better, not how you wish someone else were better. Right? Yeah. Or how they suck. It's unprofessional. It, you know. It's negative. Publish, yeah, exactly. Publishers already operate in a rough, frustrating, failure-heavy business. If you're already negative, why would they want to spend more time with you? They got enough negativity. They hear no all day long. Yep. They don't need to hear. So, yeah, unprofessional in a couple ways. One, uh, you may be talking about one of their buddies. Yep. Or someone that they have more insight into and respect. Mm-hmm. Just because you don't get it yep. doesn't mean that publisher doesn't respect them as well. And so you may be stepping on toes that you don't even understand. And yeah, so that's talking not, about stuff that you don't have any clue about. Right. So it's not a good look. And it's not making the publisher go, yeah, they do suck. That person with that number one. We should work together. Yeah. <laughs> you've Said convinced no one me. Ever. <laughs> yeah, you've convinced me of how good you are by... Bashing these other guys. Bashing these other people. You look so much better in comparison. <laughs> well, I mean, what's that lead to, right? I mean, that doesn't lead to anything. So, uh, and this goes not just for meetings. It goes for being out and running into someone, or yeah. just in general, right? It's. I was. I was writing with uh, an aspiring something the other day, and several things came up about you know how you know this person got this opportunity, but. I didn't, and really, just why them versus you know, kind of what I do and stuff, and it's just negative. Yeah, it's like I'm not vibing here. I don't want to be around this. Not coming from a place of gratitude. Not coming from a place of gratitude. It's almost coming from a place of when you ask that question, entitlement. You're entitled. Or, yeah, yeah. You're like I, mean, I deserve this. No, you didn't. No. Uh, well, then something's missing. Yeah. Not. Nobody deserves anything. Yeah. The the top writers, man. Like you know, listen to that. Mac Davis interview. Yeah. Wasn't one song he got that he wasn't just grateful for. Yeah. For for the chance to have, have an opportunity to make it happen and a bunch of them were Elvis Presley hits. Like, yeah. goodness gracious. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, That's living. Like, yeah. But he, he's not like, man, I should have had six more because I'm Mac Davis and yeah. all this stuff happened. You know? Like, that's gets you nowhere. Yeah, Exactly. We'll so wound up about that today, as you know. Yeah, I can tell. It's uh, yeah, we talked before. Uh, so that's the thing. It, it, it looks negative. It looks unprofessional. It's like they. Well, how much more are they going to hang out with you if that's kind of what you're coming and blasting other people, that yeah. who may be their buddies or they may know are really talented, and you just don't get it. And what are you going to say about me after you leave this room? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not not a good look. So number three. Don't disrespect the publisher's time. All right, so you ask for a 15-minute meeting, stick to the 15 minutes. Even if you don't have an agreed-upon meeting length, it's better to make things short and sweet. So after a little bit, man, volunteer to bail. Hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. You know, you're reaching for your bag or whatever. Now, if the publisher wants to visit more, they'll certainly tell you so, right? They'll be like, no, no, hang out, man. It's cool. But if they need or want to end the meeting... You've allowed them to do so in a way that makes them feel good and gracefully, like, mm-hmm. oh, I mean, yeah, thanks, man, thanks for coming by. And you're saying that you're you're saying that I respect you. I respect your you and your time. I know you're busy, dude. Let me bail out. It's yeah. better to leave them wanting more of you than leave them wanting less of you. That's right. <laughs> All right. That's right. I'd rather have them go, man. I'd like to hang out a little bit more than I'd like to hang out a little bit less. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get that last hour of my life back. Never getting that back. <laughs> right. So. You know, it's kind of like a date. Better for it to be a, a great one-hour coffee date than it was great, then it tapered off, and then it was like, eh, by the end of it, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think know? George Costanza in the Seinfeld episode where he always walks out on top. As soon as he leaves, he just leaves. Like, as soon as yeah. he gets him laughing, everybody cracks up, and he, <laughs> Gone. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. and everybody's like, that guy's the funniest guy ever. <laughs> exactly. Don't, <laughs> don't stay too long. Try to, yeah. Man, so, I mean, that that what a great soft close kind of like or, or uh, not soft close the wrong word what a great litmus test for how it's going 
Yeah. When you do something like that, like mm-hmm. when I when I first came to town and I did that, I talked about this before, but I did it with uh, Kim Tribble. Mm-hmm. You know, I came in on a referral from another guy yeah. and I, I set up an appointment with him and we sat and talked for a little bit and I was real nervous because I'd never been around a hit songwriter before, yeah. you know, and, and I'd never been to Nashville. I'm like, this is really weird. And yeah. I, and even though he couldn't have been more gracious, I mean, yeah, he's just great. such a yeah. But then I was like, hey, man, I, I'm going to get out of here because I, I know you're busy and I really appreciate your time. And he's like, no, hang out, man. Go run some errands. You want to go with me? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, But then... I, yeah, I wasn't leaving because I had something yeah, to do. Right. I'm just trying to look out <laughs> for you. I was leaving because I figured you did. Thinking about you. What a great... What a, sometimes that can turn into something a little bit more. Yeah, know? then that's great. Then it's pressure off. You're in, you're in bonus time. But if he... And some, you know, he may have legitimately had something he had to do and it would have been like, thanks. Yeah. Yep. I got to run to the bank, but it's a proctologist. Yeah. After that, and you probably, I don't really I need company there, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, in that case, he didn't have anything. River, you can throw a fist up there, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Call me later. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> anyway. But yeah, they may have something they got to do, and it lets them bail out without them having to go, well, it's time for you to go. Yeah, That's exactly. awkward, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so even like you know with one on ones, I appreciate it, man. You hit that time, you agreed upon time, and they're like, "Hey, appreciate your time, bailing out. Thanks." Yeah, I'm just like, cool. That, I appreciate it. Sometimes I may go, "Hey, well, let's finish this thought. I got a little time, or I may have another appointment coming up, or my wife may be outside the door going dinner time." Yep. You know, so it allows me to go appreciate it instead of me having to go. All right. Yeah. All right, that's and that's the time we uh, got to go. I got stuff. You know, that's just all. It doesn't make me feel good. Yep. Right. And again, it's not about you. You're there to solve the publisher's problems. You don't want to just give them another problem. Like now, my problem is how do I get this guy out of my office? Yeah. Now I have another problem. Yeah. I'm not working You're on solving the, the problem. problems I had when he walked in. <laughs> Going back. Now I got another problem. How to get him out of my office? <laughs> that's right, man. And I mean, think about this. Like, especially if it's a first publisher meeting. When you go away, like however long you spend with them, they're not going to remember what you wore. They're not going to remember what you said. They're going to remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And 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 if you make them feel good and like they were respected and that you're a kind person and that you're interested in helping them solve their problems, mm-hmm. that's what they're going to remember. Yeah. That's what's going to subconsciously come up the next time you run into them, mm-hmm. whenever that is. If it's a second meeting, if you, if you see them out of like whiskey jam or something mm-hmm. or, you know, like whatever, like you see them socially, some at a restaurant, I mean, like. That's what they're going to remember, and that's you. You, you get to absolutely architect mm. that imprint that you're going to leave on their brain. Yeah, do it intelligently. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's better to leave them wanting more than wanting less, and and hopefully your songs will make them feel something. Hopefully, it's, your song is, is strong enough that they'll carry that with them. Yep, that's a high bar because they listen to a whole lot of songs. So at least you can be. Um, gracious in how you exit and even if you have like a really strong song but you're pushing too far and listen to too many they listen to too many then you get in your second level stuff and your third level and then you're like oh yeah i listened to you know he made me listen to like parts of eight songs the first two were great then it went downhill so that's my last impression is like yeah uh, again you know, you're like, on oh. average is not great better to play like two killer songs and be like i'm out like george yeah. <laughs> and then go i want to hear more i'll get back to you yeah you i know, brought you go, with me. yeah last couple ones are just you know but you're fishing you just want to get I want you to hear everything I've ever done just in case one of them blows your <laughs> skirt up right. you know uh, again then you can run the good imp- or even if you just play two that are really strong but then you chit chat and then you don't leave and then you don't leave then it's awkward and then you you spoil all the good warm fuzzies the publisher had about like these are really two good songs yeah but then you you left them with a bad feeling because you wouldn't leave now they're like don't invite them in to listen to some more because I might not be able to get them out again yeah. yeah. Is it worth the hassle? Here's another angle on that. So, like, with the Lonely Highway Boys, mm-hmm. like, they sent up some songs. We brought them up to do some recording. Mm-hmm. And um, Randy and I are talking, and we're like, man, you know, they had, like, one really killer song on there that we loved. A couple yeah. of these other songs were pretty good. And, and they were newer, mm-hmm. right? And they were good. But it wasn't. It, they paled in comparison to that one that was, like, killer, yeah. right? And so we're like, man, you guys got any other songs, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah. Hold on a second. And so they sent us up like two other songs. Like, why the hell did you send us these? Like, <laughs> these are amazing. They were yeah. killer, dude. Like, huh. Barstool Days is one of them, you know? And yeah. it was like so good. And we're like, these are great. Like, oh, we didn't, you know, like, it's so good to come off like that. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you get a fun little Easter egg on the next meeting. Yeah. You know, yeah. or if he asked you for something else, you're like, let me see what I can dig up. And then you send him like some, like the third thing is. Hey, honey, killer. leave a little mystery for the second date. There you yeah. go. Right. And then it's like, oh, man, now you're just you're just solidifying that whole thing. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, you know, because some of that is like it could be the desperation. You know, believe me, there's nothing the publisher can tell you in that 20 minutes of overtime. Just one more thing. Just one more song. Just one more song. That's going to be worth being annoying and inconsiderate. Yeah. Because that's the kind of desperation. Like, oh, OK, you don't love me yet. Well, how about uh, I don't know. I got us heard a little bit more. <laughs> you know, it's like no, no, now you're just desperate. That's just yeah. not cool. That's right. Yeah. So That's right. all right, so we got don't be an ask hole. Don't talk bad about other songs and songwriters. Don't disrespect the publisher's time. Number four, don't be arrogant or argumentative. All right, so confidence is good. So overconfidence is even better, right? <laughs> no. No. So be humble. Take their feedback and advice with a teachable attitude. Even if they get the vibe that you think you already have it all, if, if they get the vibe that you think you already have it all figured out, this is a turn off. So even if you think the publisher is foolish not to fall in love with your song, your five minute ballad or whatever, and see that's an obvious hit, be humble. Just say thank you, because you know what? You cannot argue a publisher into liking your song. Yeah. They want to like your song, right? If you're just coming in, they may not expect to like your song, but they would love to like your song. Yeah, because again, that helps them helps solve a them. problem. Helps yeah. them solve a problem. They don't want to hate your song. They're not having you walk in going, "Whew, hope this sucks." Yeah, they don't get paid to say it sucks and not take any songs. They don't make them any money, so yeah. they want. They actually want to like your song. Yep. And then if if you're if you're nice, then they really want to like your song because they're liking you. But for one thing, if you're already arrogant, then they kind of probably don't want to like your song. That's so right. That way they get to slap you down. But even if they, you know, it's be thankful for the opportunity. It's a big opportunity. Not everyone gets that opportunity to sit down with a publisher. And and another thing I've noticed with my own coaching, right? So I'm not a publisher, but, you know, if I do a, a meeting or somebody's, you know, with somebody, and I used to do these with, with NSAI, and there are some people. So it didn't happen so much these days with the Songwriting Pro community because, I don't know, y'all are awesome. But some NSAI members that get, I was one of the pro coaches there. So you get an hour meeting and people would funnel through and, and some people, it was, um, would argue with me. Like if I didn't, if I wasn't loving their song, I'd be like, oh, here's what I'm thinking. Here's some areas, you know, so I'm giving specifics, right? Cause mm-hmm. it's not just a, eh, pass. No, I'm here to help you get better. So I'm like, okay, let's look at the second verse. And overall, here's some things. And, and they're like arguing with me or they're like, you know, rolling their eyes or they're like, you moron, <laughs> you don't realize my greatness. How much more advice am I, am I going to give them? How much more am I going to try and help them get better? Right. I'm not. Yeah. Why waste my breath? I'm just like, all right, have fun. You already got to figure out nothing I can teach you anyway. You know why? Because I may know more than you, but there is nothing I can teach you. Yeah. You know, because you you're not receptive. Yeah. You're not teachable. Why am I going to bang my head against the wall? It's not going to change the wall. It's just going to hurt my head. Yeah. So I'm not get. I'm giving you the best that you'll accept. But if you're more teachable, other people are like taking down notes like, oh, okay, man, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, what you know, what else? And you can tell they're absorbent, they're receptive. Then I'm like, yeah, add another thing. Yeah. <laughs> and here's some more thoughts. And let's now it's more let fun me tell you some more. Because to, like to, to, to interact with them. Because I actually like to help songwriters. So if a songwriter's being receptive and taking in what I'm giving them, trying to help them, yeah. that's exciting for me because I want you to get better. Yeah. And so and if you're taking what I'm giving, I want to give you more. I want to give you my best. Yep. Because you want it. You value it. I feel valued. Yeah. Right? So it, it, it feeds me. All right? So, yeah. I, so I want to feed you. And I want to give you the best to help you get better because I'm liking you. Because you're respecting me, my opinions, that kind of stuff. And so if you're arrogant or argumentative, it just shuts down the, the publisher, whoever is working with you. Because you're, why are we going to waste our time? I, I got other things to do. Yeah, I'm not going to throw my pearls in a before. sandbox with me. Yeah, I'm not going to throw my pearls before swine. Yeah, I mean, you know what I think of? I think of um, Chris Oglesby talking about um, when he go, would go to events like the Climb Conference that we mm-hmm. had, and, and he's like, "Man, we're not looking for the song, yeah, so much as we're looking for a songwriter in there somewhere." Mm-hmm. So in that yeah. instance, think about that. Like, you want them to like you, yeah, right? You want them to like you so that if if he's giving you advice on something like that, and don't argue with them, take it in, and if he feels like you're coachable, he might be hear something in there. He. he you're wanting him if you're focused on slamming that song down his throat. Right. You're coming from the wrong place. Wrong place. If, if he if he's 
thinking like you're coachable and he's like man I'm like he might be thinking to himself oh, I might hear something in here maybe he's going to start doing that on purpose to find out <laughs> right if you're going to be argumentative you know but then he's going to want to help you right. and say you know what cuz he, he feels honored yeah stay in touch and, and I think he, he, if he could be a part of the person that mm-hmm. takes you to the next level Mm-hmm. Because if I get you around some other writers, these other people here, you're going to learn something, and I feel yeah. like you could you could get to the next level. He's going to take pride in that, take ownership in your development, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But you're all like, it's not this song, you know? Yeah. Or next one, next one, yeah. next. One. Uh, it's like, okay, you're not here to learn. You're here to get discovered. You're not here to get better. Yeah. And so if you're, that means all I can do is, if your songs are good enough to be discovered, great. They probably aren't. So I can't discover you. So I guess we're done here. But if you want to get better, we can have a conversation. And then there may be a future for you. If you've already got it figured out, well, then I guess uh, this is where you top out. So I guess we don't need to talk anymore because you're not good enough yet. But if you're coachable, hey, you may turn that corner. The light switch may come on. You may just con- or you may just con- continue that steady climb in your skills. And yeah, let's let's dance. You know, over the next few years, whatever. Keep track of each other. Uh, so I know that that just shut me down completely. And then they end up, what happens is they don't like your song. They don't love your song, right? Fine, it happens. I have, I've have i had publishing deals. My publisher didn't love every song I turned in. Yep. By no means. There's some that are just like, yeah, all right, well, get to the next one. You yeah. know? Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's part of the game, right? It's yep. part of the business. You just, all right, take another swing tomorrow. But if you're arrogant, argumentative, what happens? They end up not liking your song and... They end up not liking you too. Problem. Big problem. And that second part was avoidable. The first one, hey, you came with your best shot. God bless you. Thanks for getting in the arena, taking a swing. But they didn't have to leave not liking you. Yep. That's on you. That your you're song, you wrote the best control. you could. The being an arrogant jerk, that is on you. Yep. You know, so watch that. And we're talking about, you know, you want people to like you. It's not about having no backbone and just trying to be what they want you to be be yourself but don't be a jerk yeah maybe if you're a jerk don't be yourself yeah but you know so but yeah you want to be likable but it's not about just bending over backwards and being spaghetti spined and and trying to be a chameleon to play a part that you think they'll like be you yeah but then don't be arrogant and argumentative <laughs> even if that is you yes exactly. <laughs> yeah. just being myself all right glad we got that on the table all right you ready for the fifth one fifth and final yes sir all right don't be a total fanboy or fangirl so uh, yeah it's cool to compliment the the publisher about their writers and their success because that's you know cool that you know what they're about some of their success you've done some homework oh that's good right oh congrats on the new you know Brett Elder single and blah 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 whatever you know that's great shows you kind of know what's up you're doing your homework and it's also great to uh, express appreciation for their time and to let them know you respect them thank you so much for letting me come in today I, I know you're busy you got a ton of people you could write with I really appreciate your time yeah good because it is <laughs> it is valuable right yeah but don't freak out and overdo it like if you gush too much it's it's unprofessional and if it's you act unprofessionally you'll be viewed as a wide-eyed tourist like oh you just got off the Truck. Yeah, you just got off the tour bus. <laughs> I didn't know they made stops at my office anymore. You know, thanks. Yeah. Is uh, CMA Fest this week? Yeah. Time for that? You is, want me to sign something? This band's out. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So they won't take you seriously as a songwriter or as a pro. Uh, so, I mean, don't fake it like you're a big shot. You know, don't try to come in again with the arrogance yep. kind of thing. So you don't want to, but just try to act like you belong there. Mm-hmm. But you are appreciative. Be humble, but don't humiliate yourself. You know, there's a difference between being humble and humiliating yourself. And and so, like, yeah, you don't need, they don't need you to just go down the list of, you know, the old Chris Farley thing. Remember that time you did that thing? That was awesome. Because, <laughs> you know, that's not helping them solve a problem unless their problem is they just need their ego stroke that day. Right. You know, you want to help them solve their problems. That's not getting... That's not a good way for them to get to like you. It's also not positioning yourself very well because don't you want to be seen as a peer? Exactly. You want to act like you belong. Yeah. Like, you know, when you get to the end zone, kid, try to do me a favor, yeah? Act like you've been there before. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, there's a phrase I've heard years ago that's like, one down yet qualified. Like, I'm a little bit, you know, you're one step up. I'm happy to be in your presence. Thank you. But I am qualified. Yeah. So one down, yet qualified. It's kind of how you do it. Like, yep. you know, so I'm not the big shot over you. 
hey, man, I, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Yeah. So you're lifting them up, but you are qualified. Yeah. You know, and, and that's kind of the way you want to present yourself. Because, yeah, if you're, you're freaking out, fanboy, and they're like, I'm not going to put you in a room <laughs> with like if, a hit writer. Yeah, Ashley you're going to do that and, to them because yeah. he's not there to learn how great he is. He knows he's great. He turns on the radio. Yeah. And he gets his checks every And month. he gets his checks. <laughs> I don't need you, you know, slobbering over him. <laughs> You know, I need someone who's qualified going to go in there like a pro and, and turn in a hit song. Yeah. You know, because then I'm not getting the sense that you're professional. So that's, you know, and hopefully that's not, that's probably not as much a deal as some of these others, but it is a thing. You know, it is. Line. And I've, I've, I've had that recently. Like, mm-hmm. you know, somebody kind of doing that and it's like, it gets a little weird, you know? Like, yeah, it is. It's a little weird. It's uncomfortable and it doesn't. It's an it's it's a level of even minor minor uncomfortableness that just doesn't have to doesn't exist. Have to that you can have complete. It's one of the things that you have complete control over. Yeah. So why not stack the deck in your favor? Yeah. You know, and it happens that way with writing. Now I've written with some people that some of the songs that are why I'm here. Yeah. And and I'll throw that out there. Like, you know, I got to ride with Kent Blazy, and he wrote a bunch of that Gar stuff. You know, if tomorrow mm-hmm. never comes. He wrote freaking if tomorrow never comes. You know. <laughs> I was like, so we're writing, you know, we're going to his place, overlooking the pool, yeah. you know, and um, and I'm like, you know, thanks for the co-ride. This is awesome, you know, and and by the way, I got to tell you, that song is one of the reasons I'm here. You know, played that, you know, my buddy Tim sitting on the hay bale camping out in Arkansas. He, he, that's one of the songs he'd play, and we'd dream about getting to Nashville. So this is really cool. I appreciate it. Yeah. Then you go. Then you're like, okay, now I'm putting on my professional hat again, you know, and let's go. And here's my idea for today. Yeah, you stroke the ego. You let them know you know who they are, what they've done, but you're not sitting there all day. Yep. You know, because who doesn't like that? You know, who doesn't like to be like I appreciate that. It your your work means something to me yeah. as a writer. Had yeah. an effect on me. I just got to tell you that's th- and thanks for letting me be here today. All right, here's my idea. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, take care of it. Like I'm I'm uh, I'm on my second project right now, working with Michael Wagner. Yeah. You know, Michael produced Ozzy. He produced. He mixed Queen. He produced Alice Cooper. He produced Skid Row. He produced um, Janet Jackson. He produced. He mixed Master of Puppets for Metallica. Ooh. That changed the music industry, you know. Yeah. Um, and my favorite guitar player, Doc, and he's he's uh, produced one of their records, mixed another one. Like that dude, basically on the soundtrack of my youth. Yeah. You know, hundred yeah, just uh, surpassed a hundred. Of your misspent youth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, allegedly. Alleg- allegedly. But, uh, yeah. I mean, just recently I posted something because he told me, he's like, hey, Johnny, I, I just passed 100 million records sold. And I was like, dude, let's take a picture. And I put it up on Instagram, yeah. you know, and he's like all smiles. And, and I mean, who does that anymore, right? That's, that's crazy. But, yeah. but I mean, there's been moments where it's a business thing and he's like, hey, um, and he's a consummate professional. And so yeah. he, he's, and I'm the guy bringing the project to him. So mm. I'm like the label. Yeah. To him, yeah. you know, and he's treating me like the label to him, but only cooler. <laughs> I'm not like a suit. Like yeah. the first one I was a little bit, like uh-huh. so a little bit, but now we're kind of, it's a little different. And, uh, but, and he'll be like, Hey man, you know, I got this issue and I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm like, dude, like, that's when I'll take the moment. Like you freaking Michael Wagner, like <laughs> <laughs> do whatever the hell you want. I'll hold your cocktail, even though he doesn't drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, you're like, you're the man, you know? Yeah. And we laugh about it, but it's me. I get that in there and then I'm out and we're back to doing business. And, yeah. and he knows that I have massive respect for him. You know? Yeah. But, it's respect is what it comes down to. It's yeah. not fanboy. It, it's respect. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, he's some of those records that he did. So, I mean, he makes the first Motley Crue record like that. You know, this is, he's a big part of the reason why I'm in the, yeah. George Lynch made me want to play guitar. And yeah, and, and you probably didn't, and even if you led with that, and you probably didn't, but you didn't stay there. You know, it's like you can, maybe that's not the best place to lead. You know, the appreciation and respect, yes, but I'm not going to sit here too much in my fandom. Yeah. Because I don't and, want you to see me as a fan, and get as it a weird. peer, but I'm not going to act like I'm better than you either, because you're not. You're right, it's Michael Wagner. You know, so you're happy to be there. So it's it's a game. It's, it's a little bit of a dance. I mean, you just be yourself and be be who you are and be respectful but yeah don't on that off. note like we you know we talk about leverage right mm-hmm. like I've known I've been one degree of separation away from Michael Wagner for a, a few years now mm-hmm. like a couple of good friends of mine have worked with them uh, a couple of other friends that I've already known know him mm-hmm. and everything like that I've seen him in clubs at, at uh, different uh, times and I know that's him and mm-hmm. I don't go up and introduce myself yeah you know because I, I wanted to wait 
until I got the moment where, yeah. and then I got it. I got Jacob Cade, and yeah. I thought, man, he would be Michael would be perfect for him. I got a killer artist. I got a budget, and now I'm going to come with some business. Yeah. That's how I want to meet him. Yeah, that's how I want him to remember me on the first. Right, huh. he's, he's bringing me business. I'm bringing him business, yeah. And then we're going to get to hang out, you know? Yeah. And now, I mean, dude, like just a few days ago, we're in there and, and everybody's kind of winding down for the day and Michael's pulling up some crazy multi-track stuff that he just happens to have that he didn't, like, some of it he didn't even produce. Like, some, some Aussie stuff he did, which is, like, really cool. And yeah. you're, like, a totally different version of a really popular song. You're like, what? But, Why didn't yeah. the label take that? And he tells the story. You're like, no. And yeah. then one dude, he pulls up, like, more than a feeling from Boston. Like, yeah. He didn't produce that, but he's got all the multi-track. And he's yeah. like, check this out. You know the part where he goes really high? You know, ah, ah. He goes like yeah. way up there. He goes, that's Brad Delp, dude. And he plays just the vocal tracks. You're like, no freaking way. He's doing the harmony on top of the high one that nobody can hit. Like, yeah. you're like, what? And we're just listening to the different, like the drum groove and just mm. everybody's just talking about it. And, how, and the, you know, like that's, you get in that way, man. And, and yeah. then, then you're making a relationship, you yeah. know, and we're friends and, and. So anyway, I just thought like that was because that's a fa- total fanboy mode for me. Like I'm trying to oh, be yeah. cool. But try to, yeah, try to be cool. Try to be cool. Just be cool. Yeah. yeah. Like first time I met Garth, I, I started sweating just a little bit. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, I okay, hi. You know, and he's super cool, super nice, and everything. Yeah. But you know, and, and I met him at the publishing company uh, at Major Bob because it's what we both write for. Right. You know, at, at the time I wrote there, and and he was in I saw the Oklahoma plates on this big truck in the parking lot. I was like, ooh, it's right before Thanksgiving. I was like, I think Garth is in town, you know, and they're like, Garth is in the office, hang out, you know. So I'm hanging out in the kind of kitchenette area or whatever, and then he comes, he comes in, and they're like, Hey, Mike's introduced me. Hey, this is our writer, this is Brent Baxter, Brent, this is Garth. He's like, Hey, Garth Brooks, you know. And we're chatting about Arkansas, and he drives through on his way to Oklahoma, and we're just, you know, that kind of stuff. We just have a moment, and uh, you know, and I go outside and dab the sweat off the ground, <laughs> you know. And calm down, calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I've been waiting a long time for that one. Yeah, you know, the hay bale has come full circle. You know, it's, so. Uh, but yeah, what a great way to be introduced as a. This is one of our writers, so you automatically, yeah. you know, legit. now it's legit. You're it's there. legit, like, hey man, appreciate yep. it, you know. So anyway, uh, listen, it, it's easy to talk about how not to, to run a, a publisher meeting. It's a little bit more challenging to get one. Yeah. So. I want to let you all know about something we have coming up. Um, quarterly, I do these play for publisher events. It's uh, basically you send in your song. Um, you can get all the details at giftfrombrent.com. You download the free ebook and it puts you on the insider's list where I let you know about how to where to send the song, how to get your entry, that kind of stuff. But basically, we bring in a publisher and I whittle down all your entries to the 10 songs I think are most likely to catch the publisher's ear in a good way, solve their problems. We get on a video conference. Publisher listens to the song. You get to interact, talk for like you know a few minutes, and then we go on to the next one. But it's a face-to-face at bat from anywhere in the world. We've had Sam Spears from uh, Scotland. Scotland, yeah. He's he's come to a couple of them with some strong songs that publisher are like, oh, that's cool, you know. And and he's staying up in the middle of the night to, to join us. And they have people locally. I love that story. By and the way. yeah, it's great. Sam's great. And you know other people that are local. And the publisher's like, where where you live? I'm here in town. Come on by the office. Yeah, got one of those, and now the the writer's starting to the guy named David who's starting to develop that relationship. Them. Yeah, and anyway, so our guest on this next one, I just uh, got him confirmed, uh, is John Osier from Olay. Oh, sick. so they have writers like Chris Jansen, uh, just a lot of killer writers, a lot of stuff up in Canada. Olay's, you know, it's a John Canadian was a big A and R guy over at Curb too. Yeah, it was a big A and R guy, and also a hit writer himself, like uh, Whiskey in My Water and mm. Hard to Love. I think yep. he's a writer on that for Lee Bryce. So he's a legit writer himself, and uh, a lot of hits coming out of Olay. And so he's going to sit down, and we're going to listen to some songs with the writers. So, again, to get all the details on that, check out the blog, songwritingpro.com, or just go to giftfrombrent.com. Get instant access to the free ebook, and that also I will send you information about that. We do this quarterly. So even if you're listening in the future, check it out. We may have another one coming up. Yep. Hey, you kidding me? Like, a chance to get in front of it and what's cool is like if you're not if you're not one of the songs that are chosen you still get to watch that video feed yeah, and yeah. just see how everything goes down yeah everybody that uh, purchases a like a ten dollar you know submission entry f- kind of thing even if your song isn't chosen even if you don't send in the song but you just reserve a spot yeah everybody gets to watch the video replay we take we film it and then for a limited time everyone that entered a song or got a spot gets to watch it so you get to be a fly on the wall 
of this publisher meeting. That's Hear what so songs awesome. made it, yeah. so you can compare to your thing and what the publisher thinks about it and what nuggets they're dropping. It's like value bombs all over the place. Cause that's it's crazy. a guy every day that's trying to get cuts and getting cuts. And so it's super cool that way. But yeah. Right on. All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of another Killer Climb episode. Join the Climb community if you haven't already. Go to Facebook, research Climb community, ask to be let in. Put your, make sure you have your picture. <laughs> we'll yeah. let you in. And, uh, and uh, man, it's a great community. Everybody's interacting with everybody else and, and getting stuff done and, and just becoming better artists, better songwriters, and, and, and uh, better musicians that way, I think. Um, Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Make sure that the full episodes on Tuesday come right into your phone and the mini-sodes on Friday come right in. They're archived. They're, you can just consume it as you wish, as you please. Uh, share it with somebody. That's the best pat mm-hmm. on the back you could give us is to tell yeah. somebody else, hey, man, I like this. Like I'm finding something in this that's cool. You'll like it too, and that'll make you look cool. And we appreciate that. And then finally, take 30 seconds, leave a five-star rating and review. We will share it. We'll, we'll read it over the air. We'll make you famous, and you make us look legit. So uh, this podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top.